Hi everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I'm Peter and I'm joined with Connor. Hey guys. We are going to talk about Black Mirror Season 1, Episode 1. It's called The National Anthem. Now you're probably thinking, why are we talking about this? It's like three years old, four years old at this point. In fact, more than that, I think it was 2011 Five. this came out, yeah. yeah. Well, Season 3 of Black Mirror is coming soon. It's not been airing every year. It's had two series and it's had a Christmas special spread out over the last few years. And season three, uh, Netflix are doing it. Netflix have got the rights and they're making the next season. There's going to be six episodes hitting next month. We're going to be covering those. And given that Black Mirror is an anthology where each episode is its own thing, we thought it would be fun to go back and review all the previous episodes. Especially since Connor had seen none of it before no, now. No, not thing. I have seen the first season before. I watched the first series maybe two years ago. And I just never get around to watching the second one. And it's one of those things where I know... I know, obviously, the ones I've watched, but I know nothing about the episodes from season two. I know nothing about the Christmas special. I know John Hamm's in it, but I don't know anything about the plot. Um, and I know very little to nothing about anything in season three. This this is how I felt. Coming into series one, I know the, first, the, the premise of the first episode, because I feel like that's what everyone knows. Yeah. And then that's it. I have no idea what to expect after this. So... Yeah, so we're going to go through all of this over the next couple of weeks uh, so that we've done the whole show by the time the new season starts, which we wouldn't normally do, but Black Mirror is so short, relatively speaking, because it's only had seven episodes, and each one's essentially its own movie. <laughs> so they're all completely different and therefore very interesting to talk about. And it does happen to hit a nice period of time for us where we can actually fit this in. Yeah, because we've got a couple of weeks of quiet downtime before all the pilots and the returning network shows come back. So we're fitting this in now. We thought it'd be a fun thing to spend a couple of weeks in September on. So, yeah. So, episode one, it's called The National Anthem. And this one's kind of famous because it's this is... It's the one that came true. <laughs> it's the one that kind of came true. Uh, so, full spoilers uh, for this uh, as we talk about it. And this is the episode of Black Mirror where a ransom demand is made. A princess is kidnapped by some unknown person and a video was sent to the Prime Minister of the UK and there's one... Oh, no, no, no. This is, this is, this oh, is so more it's interesting. It's, sent, it's just put on YouTube for everyone. True, true, true. It's a big it's, deal. It's sent to YouTube. Yeah, a big theme of the episode is uh, social media and the internet and how the stuff spreads. That's a very yeah. good point. Uh, but I was, I was getting to the, 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 you know, the ransom demand. That, that was the main thing I was getting to here. So... She's going to be killed unless the Prime Minister does something. At 4pm on the same day, because this is like, you know, 6 in the morning or something, you know, it's the early hours. If At 4pm, live on British TV, on every single channel, the Prime Minister must fuck a pig. And, ah. she, and therefore she will be set free, otherwise she will be killed. Now, I want to point out that you said you had an idea what this was before you watched this first episode, because you'd heard of this, because because that whole Prime Minister might have fucked a dead pig's head story came out at one hmm. point last year. Hashtag piggate, go look it up if you have no idea what we were British talking politics, about. British politics, people. Yeah, it's, Brit it's... <laughs> British politics, the Prime Minister might have fucked a pig. Trump is still worse, don't get me wrong. Trump is still worse. Hashtag <laughs> worse than pig fucking. Donald Trump. Let's but, get it going. <laughs> but uh, so, but that I watched this before that happened, so I didn't actually know what this episode was about. So the that that not the opening scene because it's him waking up, but that scene at the start where they're in his like office and they show him the video and they keep pausing it to be like, now Prime Minister, we have established that this is a legitimate threat, and that the the, the demand is of a personal nature to you, and it's like it keeps building, and I didn't know what they were going to say. Like, I had no idea where this was going. Mm. And then she, like, crying, you know, reading, reading out, you know, the whole classic thing where the person who's kidnapped is reading out the demands so that the person's voice isn't heard or whatever. Standard. And she's like, must have sexual intercourse with a pig. And I think my reaction is very similar to the Prime Minister himself, who's like, come on, you're having a fucking laugh. What? Oh, yeah. This is Fine. a joke. Wait, wait, what, what's going on here? Like... And then, like, they're all just... Do you, know what, do you know what this scene oddly reminds me of? Go on. The Hitler scene in Downfall that people have memed to hell where they tell them that they're about to lose the war. Yeah. It reminds me of that scene so much. The way they're all quiet and really awkward and then, like, just give him a bit more of information. Every, like, you know, when he, when he like, just, makes... Just strip feed it. 
Yeah. yeah. Like, it reminded me of that so much. And I didn't notice it the first time I watched it. Probably because I was sort of... I didn't know what was coming and I was wrapped up in the plot. But this time... it hadn't been quite as heavily memed at that point. Yeah. But watching it now a second time, I was like, this is exactly like that scene in Downfall. Except instead of being told that he's about to lose the war, he's been told he might have to fuck a pig. (laughs) Not sure. I was not entirely sure which is worse. Well, uh... That's a debate for another another day, I think. Uh, so, obviously, there's black humour involved here because it's impossible not to think this is kind of funny. Yeah. You know, it, it's... You, you can't not. It's, it's an over-the-top request. It's um, really funny. And then the episode takes this turn where it kind of focuses on the coverage of this event. It fo- follows, you know, a fake news channel who's, you know, covering the event and it follows how... Or they've been like embargoed. That's not the exact word that they use. It's like a D notice or something like that. It's called, but yeah. it's like an embargo where they're told, "No, you can't talk about this." But it's been on YouTube. The public have seen it. It's all over Twitter, and they, they mention Twitter, they mention Facebook, and it's all about how stuff spreads and they can't contain it, and how this would be a completely different situation had that not happened. Because that's the big thing that happens in that scene is that after he, he gets the threat and he gets the demand and he's like, "Okay, well that's not happening." Um, the first thing the Prime Minister says is, okay, we need to contain this. No one outside this room hears this. And again, it's like one of those moments in Downfall where they all sort of gulp and go, uh, sir, it's... Uh, it's a bit late for that. Yeah, it's on YouTube. It's like, well, you pull it down. It's like, oh, we did. Uh, we pulled it down after nine minutes. But by then it had already uh, been downloaded and duplicated. And how many people have seen it? 50,000, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's impossible <sighs> not to be laughing during this scene. It is impossible yeah. not to, but maybe not out loud. But there's like a sort of yeah, like there's just... like a, an inner chuckle, isn't there? Yeah, that it's just... like, oh my god, this yeah. is actually happening. Yeah, so really good. So we get we get like perspectives of like random people. There's like people who work in a hospital that we see watching the news, and there's people who work in a bar, and there's people. Uh, there's like a random artist stood who's like painting, like, and there's. Uh, other people, yeah, and we're, there's a guy, the guy in his bed with his girlfriend who are just watching the news in bed. It's kind of thing, and they're all just sort of commenting on what's going on, and it, it's funny how similar to an election coverage a lot of this felt like because they start taking polls as to whether or not he should do it. Like, do the public expect him to go through with it to save her life? Yeah, and they talk a lot about uh, the price, uh, his approval rating. Yeah. And like that, they are they cover it from a very political angle as well as the other st- side of things that we get. But it's all because it's so absurd, though. It's always relentlessly entertaining. Yeah. Like, because like when he's talking about the polls and like what people expect of him and all that, and obviously they they try and make a go of uh, catching whoever's done this, and they they get people into like ping the IPs and all that jazz, and they they think they've found them, they send in a, a team, and you kind of. You almost have this feeling, given the tone of the show, that it's futile. That there's no way this is going to be a success. Yeah. Um, but that's a really good scene. Another, another uh, great thing is they try to trick it. They get a special effects guy to come in and they hire a porn star. Right, can you CG someone else's head onto someone else's body? And he's like, yeah, I can do that. What sort of camera is it? Oh, it because that's the, the part of the, the demand is that the camera always has to be moving, and there's a lot of other technical specifications, all of which are clearly designed so that they can't fake it. Yeah, that's that's clearly the entire point. Yeah, because that's why it's such a short time frame as well. Because if they had a week to do this, well, we can knock it up. We can get actors in. We can you know mm. fake the whole thing. But no, it was it has to be live. Has to be in like x number of hours. Has to be a constantly handheld moving camera. Like it was all designed. So that it couldn't be faked. Do you know who I feel bad for? Camera crew. Oh yeah, I felt sorry for that camera guy. Uh, to be fair, I felt sorry for him as well. He's been kind of forced into this, and I'm well, like, well, yeah, I feel bad for him too. Because honestly, we we never really get a sense of who he like. What it's not like. Had there been like a like a prelude showing us that he was like this really shitty prime minister who had like sent us to war and got millions of people killed, it'd be a completely different story. Yeah, for all we know, he's a very good prime minister. It, yeah. It's well, whereas I mentioned it, it plays the political angle as in more party politics of mm. how he's perceived. It never chooses a political side. We never. He could be any prime minister. It could be any. Yeah. Party. I tell you who I uh, feel bad for is his wife. 
his, his wife's reactions to everything feels really bad. Like she's reading the comments, and one of them's like, oh, she'll be sucking uh, bacon fat off his dick for the next month yeah. or something like that. I was like, oh, God, this is just... You get why she feels awful. Yeah. You you really do. Um, but, yeah, so the, 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 the dude, or the, whoever's doing this, finds out they're trying to fake it, and he sends in a finger and, like, a message saying, ha-ha, like... You know, like yeah. try to fake it. Yeah, good job. And that actually changes the opinion of the public because they tried to fake it. Even though the prime minister himself didn't know they were trying to fake it. Yeah. And it's, all of a sudden, like it's like ninety percent of people saying, "No, I should do it." It's that whole idea where it's not real until there's something physical. Mm. It's 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 the whole idea again because the whole point of this show is it's it's a social commentary. Yeah. And like obviously for this, it's the way people act on the internet and it's like it's nothing real we're just talking to, it's just a screen so we do whatever we want and they kind of feel that way up to this point where it's just a youtube video so, you know who cares Honestly, but now there's i would argue that they kind of feel that way up until the actual thing and we because i feel like him trying to fake it gets the bad opinion right and I, I guess I get that the finger elevates it, but to be honest, most of them seem quite happy to watch it because it still feels like a prank almost at that point. Where you see them in the bar and they're all raising their glasses as it's about to start because when it comes on the screen, they're all like, "Yay!" It's like, a bit of that, but I think that the finger starts the turn because it's like, "Well, there's something physical now. Mm. It's not just something on a screen." But they still all try to look at something they want to watch until it's like proper underway, and you see all their face reactions just kind of turn, um, and they mention that it's been going for an hour. Um, it's, it's like oh, Chris, what's the, the just before he goes in, she gives him the advice. She goes, "Don't rush. It'll it'll seem like you're enjoying it." Or, well, I, I think that's good advice, but I don't think that's why it lasts an hour. I think it legitimately is just taking an hour. Like, I think yeah. he just can't. Like, I mean, but it's like we, that, that's the point. It sets it up like, ah, don't rush. You know, take your time. Yeah, because you've got to finish. Yeah, there's, yeah, the specifications say that he has to finish. He has to complete. <laughs> yeah, the sex. Ah, poor guy. <laughs> yeah, um, really, really strong tone. Really, and it really feels like a statement because you find out at the end, of course, after it all went down. And c- case in point, the uh, the princess is actually let out early. She's let yeah, out before you, even... you. You see it, don't you? Before we, we see it as an audience before the event actually happens. Yeah, well, I, I think it's actually during. I think it's like it's in her cut. Uh, is it? Yeah, it's in our cup with uh, as it's happening. But as uh, I, I think it's like he, he, he gives his speech. He's like, uh, "I love my wife, and I hope this re- safely returns, princess, whoever." And I think it's when he's like, unbuttoning and all that that it's in our cuts with uh, her just strolling through yeah. the streets, or mm. staggering, and then yeah, staggering across the bridge, isn't it? Um, and then at the end, we find out that it was the painter who was kind of watching throughout the yeah. episode. And they mentioned on the news that he was like a, a modern artist, and they say that oh, some people are calling this the first great artistic expression of the, the century or whatever. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but it's interesting. It, it pokes at a lot of interesting things. And what really gets me is I remember Charlie Booker, who's the creator of the show, and wrote this episode and, I, and wrote a lot of them. I don't know if he didn't write all of them, but he wrote I several. That, I think maybe four out of the first six. Yeah. And I remember him talking about how Twitter's one of the is like a new video game because he did this countdown on TV of the, like the hundred greatest, greatest video games or most important video mm. games, and the he did it in chronological order. So it started with Pong and you know worked its way through Mario and everything to present day. And the newest one was Twitter, and he spoke about how Twitter is kind of a, a game, like it's about gaining more followers and like becoming more famous on Twitter. The whole thing is a game. It's just presented as something else yeah so it's very interesting that the first episode of this is very kind of playing with the idea of social media and twitter and how like because the internet is constantly ruining the prime minister's life it's constantly like making it impossible to like ignore or hide or shy away from and then it's also constantly bringing abuse back to his wife because it's constantly like she's seen the comments she's seen the opinions of things yeah, it's th- this whole episode. It is social media and the internet. How things spread. Yeah, the, the quick spread of information and the way people react, and they don't tend to 
care so and, much. It's not real to them because it's just there. Until they see it on the screen and they see how awful it actually is. Yeah. Um, so that, that that's very much the statement that's been made. And I think uh, uh, it's very good because I, I can say, having seen the next two, that there's also statements being made. <laughs> I think that's so, kind of the whole show. It's kind of seemed yeah. to listen to the point. There was the other thing, like the you mentioned the thing with the news, how they weren't allowed to talk about it. And, yeah, how they seem dated because everything else could talk about it and they were still being held back. With those. We we see it all the time in real life. I mean, I think just last year there was a like a celebrity injunction for, yeah. uh, and but like it was only in England that it applied to and only to print and print and TV news online could do whatever twitter could do whatever scotland could tell you whatever uh-huh. but england can't and it's just like but but they're suffering because what's the point everyone knows you can see well, it anywhere that, else that's the thing that happens in this though because all the american news networks start talking about it they all start broadcasting it exactly because why not because they, they're under no rules like why would they yeah so at which point they're like well we have to start running it now because other news exactly. channels because all those american news networks broadcast in the uk so yeah they're there they can they can be seen so you know um but now it's, it's a very strong first episode because there's, there's a nice sort of ticking time bomb thing going on in the whole episode where you yeah. feel the tension build as he's like and, you, and when they try and they think they found the person and it's just the, the mannequin and it fails you can the frustration in his face like we're not out of time we're not out of time and he's like it's twenty past three, and <laughs> and uh, it's that that bit is also the one person who really stands out in the episode that I don't feel sorry for. That stupid journalist woman. Oh yeah, because she is an idiot. She's just like, why did you run? Just stand there, hands up, and yell uh, who you are. Oh, press. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck are you doing? No, you got yourself shot, shot, you silly bitch. Yeah. <sighs> Dear. But no, fantastic first episode. Yeah, it was really great. I can't wait to watch more. Hmm. Um, I will give you a tease for the next episode just to give you the theme that it's playing with mm, okay All right. I can only do this for the next two because I've not seen anything past that but I just want to give you a teaser the next episode focuses on the obsession with things like X Factor and American Idol so uh, reality shows yeah or, specific, or more specifically like the voting aspect perhaps Yes, yes. Yeah. That's a big theme in the next episode, so. Okay. So. I'm I'm intrigued. Okay. I think Charlie Brock has done a very good job of crafting crafting some great social commentary here. Yeah. Um and much like the the uh, sci fi now obviously this one this one wasn't really that science fictiony. The next two definitely are. Alright. The next one is set in the future, uh, for a start. And then the third one's definitely got some sci fi tech involved. Um but like like the uh, sci-fi anthologies of old, uh, thinking Twilight Zone, it feels like it's breaking new ground and saying things rather than just um, here's a fun plot. Yeah, it's know? not just telling a story; it's actively trying to reflect the current situation of life. Yes. So, no, first episode very good. So we'll be back with uh, the next episode in a couple of days' time. So, uh, yeah, let us know what you think of episode one in the comments below. Um, yeah, you know, it'd be interesting to hear what people think all this time, uh, you know, after it's aired, and uh, yeah, we, so you know, uh, season three of Black Mirror hits uh, in October. We will be back with that when that hits. We'll be doing all six episodes of that uh, within the first few days uh, or so of it going up on Netflix. Um, find us on Twitter at mail underscore fuzz. Like and subscribe, all that jazz helps us out a lot. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.